Hey y'all, Casey here. Let's talk subgenres of movies. I mean, what's your favorite? Let me know in the comments. Uh, for me personally, I've always loved werewolves. Anything with werewolves. Werewolf movies are my bread and butter. And so I'll tell you some of my favorites and like what I think is the worst one, if not the worst movie of all time. Uh, for the first one, it'd be 1981, American Werewolf in London. Ah, oh, so great. Has uh, David Naughton, uh, you know, if you remember him, he was in the Dr. Pepper commercials way back in the day. And being from Texas, I love Dr. Pepper, so that's a win. And he also had a hit disco song uh, back in the day called Making It. This time for sure I'm making it. And I really suck at singing, so you have to look up Making It, the song, and it's a rock and disco groove. It was pretty on top for the day. But I digress. Uh, Anyways, the movie is about two really good friends. They're hiking in uh, Britain, and they're out in the middle of nowhere. They come across a pub that's really spooky, and everyone basically stops talking as soon as they walk in, like the kind of like the old westerns where you, they'd open the swinging doors and the piano stops and everyone looks over, exactly like that. And uh, they're, they're not really volunteering much about you know what their dangers are, uh, but they see a lot of creepy stuff kind of pointing to something might be weird and going on here. Uh, one person finally kind of warns them that they shouldn't go out there, but they decide this is, these people are too weird, so they're just going to leave. And so they go out walking in the nighttime and on the full moon, and uh, I mean, would you ever suspect that they get attacked by a werewolf? I mean, who would have thunk? Uh, yeah, they do, and uh, it's vicious and scary, and David survives. He gets uh, initially mauled, but then his friend uh, comes, what's his name, uh, Griffin Dune, uh, yeah, he comes, helps him, and anyways, Griffin Dune gets uh, chomped up to bits. David wakes up in the London in the hospital, and he don't know, he's thinking, what in the hell happened? Uh, this beautiful nurse starts taking care of him, and there's definitely chemistry there, so, but while David is uh, recovering, he keeps having dreams and visions of his friend, and he's all bloodied up and attacked from the, the werewolf attack. And also each time he sees him, he's more decomposed. So his friend is telling werewolf now, and you need to basically kill yourself because you're gonna turn and hurt people on the full moon. David thinks he's losing his mind, doesn't really believe it. I mean, he partially thinks maybe this is real, but for the most part, he thinks it's too crazy to believe. He gets a little better and they, uh, him and the nurse, you know, start hitting it off more, so she invites him back to her place and bounce, chicka bounce, they, they get it on and they fall even more in love. Uh, and uh, then she has to leave for a ship, so it's the night of the full moon. He's pacing around. He's about 50-50 maybe, but it progressively gets like 60-70 percent where he's like thinking, am I a werewolf? And he really still doesn't believe it until the last minute. And when that full moon hits, he just drops to the floor screaming in pain. Bang. Best transformation scene of a werewolf ever. Still the best. And this is a movie in 1981. No CGI. CGI where the, it's like, poof, I'm a little werewolf with glitter on him. No, he does a slow, arduous, painful transformation and it is spectacular. And so he goes out, runs amok across London, you know, and in the end, it has to be the, his girlfriend, the nurse, that has brave enough and, and, and she ends up taking his life with a gun and he won't let anyone else basically approach. He kind of finally realizes as a wolf what he's done and, it's, and his love for her, he's fallen deeply in love with her and he lets her get close enough to, to shoot and kill him. So what's interesting about this movie, it's not just scary, but it's really funny also. There's some really funny scenes, which you wouldn't think. You've got uh, visions of Nazi soldiers and uh, monsters, you know, and, and uh, you know, Griffin Dune is, or not Griffin Dune, but David Naughton, he's like running naked in the woods. There's a lot of like real spooky stuff going on, but there's also funny moments, especially with Griffin Dune's character when he comes back to tell David, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself, but he makes it really funny. But above all, this is a love story, a big time love story. And uh, 
you know, you might not think it's a chick flick, but I really do think it's a, a cool, cool chick flick in some ways because it's really sad and beautiful. It's a great love story to me. Okay, number two, also 1981, which I think is the golden year for werewolf movies, The Howling. Uh, awesome. Awesome transformation scenes. Um, not as great acting as you're going to get on American Werewolf in London and, you know, other stuff. But the transformation stuff was really original and fresh. It was really awesome to watch. Uh, basically, this starts with a reporter in L.A. She's helping the police track down a serial killer. And this whole episode just freaks her out so much that she has to go heal her mind at a at a psychiatric ward and one of her colleagues ends up taking the baton and, and, and investigates what she was looking into and really comes across just a werewolf den and all this craziness and it's a good story still not as good a story as uh, American Werewolf in London and again the acting is pretty good but not fantastic but the transformation stuff uh, I love I just love it I still love it it blows so many movies away today um, I think it's worth it just for that number three I think this one is around 2000. Ginger Snaps. Ah, oh, such a great movie. Great, great transformation scenes. Really boss. Uh, this is about two sisters. One's maybe a senior, the other probably a freshman in high school. And it's about how siblings can grow apart when one starts to hit puberty. And that's what the eldest one does after she gets attacked by a werewolf. She starts acting a lot different. She starts being a lot meaner to her little sister who of course idolizes, the little sister idolizes her, so she takes it really harsh. And she starts being a little more sexually promiscuous, promiscuous and uh, they just start really butting heads. And, and, uh, but it's also scary as hell. It's a really scary movie with great transformation scenes. But above all, it's about a, a girl coming into a, a woman, turning into a woman, reaching adulthood. It's about, there's heavy feminist undertones and, and Really, the blood and, and, and transformation is about uh, becoming a woman. It's about menstruation, you know, have, getting your period. So it's really a really great, empowering movie in that light, and I'd highly suggest it. I mean, it's, it's got some deep stuff behind it, not just a, just a thrash, you know, movie. So it's a really good movie. Uh, I'll give an honorable mention. Number four would be Dog Soldiers. Oh, so good. Scary as hell, bipedal werewolves, and they're smart, and they're hunting you, and it's amazing. Uh, you don't really get a transformation scene, but you get some, I mean, it's scary, and I, I'm really impressed with uh, the werewolves on that, so I suggest that one, too. Worst werewolf movie of all time, I picked it up because it had two of my favorite words in. It had werewolf and Texas, Mexican werewolf and Texas. And it is a piece of trash. You could use that for a cup holder and be just fine. I mean, I don't know. It might not even be good enough for the cup. But uh, it's so bad. I mean, it's basically a person dressed up in a really awful chupacabra costume running around. Bad acting, bad video shooting, bad, bad everything. And it's not even like cheesy where you get some friends and watch it with them just to laugh at it. It's just like this is so bad I gotta turn it off and I hate myself for ever even watching it so I highly suggest never getting that movie <laughs> and uh, so that's my fix I mean so what's your favorite subgenre you tell me and if you have some more favorite werewolves let me know because werewolf movies I love anything werewolf let me know and I, if this works out maybe we can do it again so again I'm Casey and y'all have a great day take care